Welcome to Miami. Bienvenidos a Miami. We are ready for Friday night fighting. And uh, the second to last card here for Combate Global. Everyone's wanting to get on it because 2023, we're not sure what we can say about it, but it will be the biggest year because 2022 was the biggest year for Combate with the rebrand, with the new Haula, and with an incredible stable of talent that keeps getting bigger because they're finding talent all over the globe. Anas Azizun last week, who would have expected it? With a huge upset over Ismael Kraken Samora, a Frenchman. And then you have the Spanish women, Andrea Meneses. The Spaniard, Tino Guilarans. What about the Chileno in Jose Ferreira? They are all looking to make names for themselves. They've come from so far and now they're here on the big stage of Combate Global, looking to set the table for bigger and better things. And as we always preach on Combate, this is where talent begins. This is where fighters find their way. And maybe that next one will be the aforementioned Jimmy Pace Jr. from Liberty City to take on Albert Big Al Gonzalez. It's a little Florida versus Canada. We are ready for the first time to send it over to La Jaula and La Voz, Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Albert Gonzalez. Big Al is back. There he is. This is going to be a catch weight of 175 pounds. So some big fellas here and Big Al is Coming to the Hala at six foot four inches tall. Fought in combate back in 2018 and 2019. Went elsewhere, tried to find his, his legs again. Did have a, a few fights in Bellator, had some success there. He's a bit of enigma. We don't know what to expect. And that's what makes him very interesting as he comes out with the Fresno State flag. Well, he does have more experience than Jimmy. Than Jimmy. Let's see what he's all about today. He has some great, good stand-up boxing. It'll be a good test for the man who talks a lot. As does Lupe. <laughs> Su rival, Jimmy Pace Jr. Where do we begin with Jimmy Pace Jr.? First of all, he is etched out of a rock. Coming up with the Mexican flag? Uh, well, he... Yeah, okay. he's throwing... He, uh, uh, yeah, he loves to throw... It's raining. Paper, yes, and he usually comes with a mask. I guess not doing it today, but... Uh, Jimmy, the reason why he's wearing that Mexican flag, Max, is because he trains with Pumas. Yes. And uh, he pushes them a lot. He has a lot of appreciation towards the Mexican culture. But Max, this guy is a character, and he's, he's a very entertaining fighter, but he's up against a big test. He's going up against a fighter who has more experience professionally. All right, this guy has a, he's a great athlete. There's no doubt of that. But... Right now, this is a real test inside La Aula. It's big for both. It's huge for Big Al as he wants to get his career back on the tracks. Jimmy Pace Jr., you can see it etched on the face. This is the biggest moment of his career, his professional debut. He has gotten all the accolades. Everyone says he's the real deal. But now we got to see him do it inside the Aula. We're ready for our first fight. We're live. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este duelo, tres vueltas a un peso pactado a 175 libras. This bout, three rounds at a catch weight of 175 pounds. Los jueces, the judges. Ricardo Celis, Mark Streisand y Vicente Rodriguez. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de azul. Presenting the blue corner, wearing blue. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 173 libras y tres cuartos. On the scale, he registered an official 173 and three quarter pounds. En su octavo combate, con tres victorias y cuatro derrotas, he enters la jaula for the eight time as a pro. With three victories against four losses. Fighting out of Fresno, California. Albert! Big Al Gonzalez. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de negro, his opposition in the red corner, wearing black. Su peso oficial, 174 libras, his official weight, 174 pounds. Esta noche, entra a las grandes ligas de las artes marciales mixtas, debutando en la jaula de combate global tonight. He makes the leap into the big leagues of MMA, making his pro debut inside of La Jaula, repping the MIA Miami, Florida, Jimmy Big Buck 
Alex Pace Jr. El referee, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, the third inside La Jaula. All right, I gave you guys the instructions in the, lo in the locker room. Obey my commands at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch them up again, go ahead. Come out, fight. Interesting. Yes. A little exchange there between the two. It was certainly on a sporting level. I think I've heard Big Al, who is in blue, say, let's do it. Yeah, what, what really was shocking about that, I've seen Pace compete in the amateur levels, and he's very oh, intense. Oh, big right by Big Al. Yeah, and and that's, that's one thing. That Pace has that strong wrestling base. He needs to stick to that. Big Al has quick hands. This is a different type of situation that Pace is in. He usually tends to just come in bra and tries to finish off the fight real quickly. But it's a different animal here. You're going up against an experienced fighter in Big Al. He's been in there for quite some time. It's a whole different atmosphere, man. A big takedown there by Jimmy Pace Jr. As you heard, Lupe Contreras, his nickname is Big Bucks. He said, I get a lot of money. I'm an entertaining fighter. I'm going to be a million dollar fighter. I can have knockouts, slams. You just saw one there. I got the body. I got the physiques. I got the good looks. I am the big money fighter. I mind blank opponents. Oh, oh, oh that's the game of trouble. Well, no, there was a shot in the. Did I see a shot? Right on cue, wow. big bucks. Wow. Where's he going? Wow. He's, he's gonna get at the. I'm he's going to the Spanish a broadcast. <laughs> he takes a headset from El Pube Alvarado. This guy, this guy's an exciting fighter. So this guy's really funny to watch. Show him the money. This guy is just awesome inside of there. <laughs> he fights at Goat Shed, and you don't get to Goat Shed. They said this is a guy that can. Bring down the house, he just did it. And what I like about him this time around is he was patient. And then once he, but once he felt that, that power from Al, he switched it and went to the ground and just pummeled his opponent. Hey, congratulations, Jimmy. You put your money where your mouth is. Liberty City in the house. We'll be back, Jimmy Pace, taking names. Well, it was a quick fight, but a lot to absorb here. Alan Abeles just told Big Al, he goes, you may not remember, yeah. but you were out for a little time. Not a lot, but enough for me to stop the fight. And also, Jimmy Pace Jr. reprimanded by uh, Artie Schiedel of our production team. And I'm not sure exactly what's it, but Jimmy Pace Jr. is not inside the howler right now. We're going to find out exactly what occurred there, but there might be a little more to talk about this fight. But before we know any more, Jimmy Pace Jr. has said that uh, MMA has given him a chance to fight at life, a chance to release anger. That's just what he did. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este combate termina con un tiempo oficial de un minuto del primer episodio. This bout concludes with an official time of one minute of the opening round. Your winner, by way of TKO, el ganador por knockout técnico, Jimmy Big Bucks, Pace Jr. You can see Jimmy Pace Jr. not inside the howler. So we will try and get some details as to what happened as Big Al, the victim of a first round TKO. Jimmy Pace talks the talk and he walks the walk as well. Much more Combate Global, but that's how we like to roll, folks. Highlights from a very quick opening bout here. Wow, so fast. Hey. I, I blinked and I missed it. Look, he did get hit with that right hand. That's what kind of shook him there. So he went, he changed levels, and he took it to the wrestling. That's his strong base. Took him straight down to the floor. He's a more powerful guy, if you compare the two, and just pummeled him with a shot. At, at one point, it no was No question deceiving. about it being stopped. Yeah, it, look at that shot right underneath. That's what knocked him out. And Allen, good for Allen and Bellis for stopping that fight like the way he did. At one point, he caught me. I thought that he had hit him in the head, but no, he was out. He was already out. That's a very hard place to knock someone out, to yeah. reach your, your arm underneath his armpit and hit him right on the chin, where you're, you're taking away a little bit of power. But obviously, Jimmy Pace Jr. has a ton of that, as uh, he didn't have to throw a lot, Just eight but punches. he left a mark. <laughs> All he needed was eight punches. He needed one, really. <laughs> wow. Jimmy Pace Jr., what an interesting story we have here. We look forward to seeing. We'll have some answers as to why he had to depart but Miami, you got a good one here. 
A guy who is just finding his legs in MMA, but finding he's in the right place. Much more combate ahead. Mi nombre es Tino Gilaraz, tengo 29 años y soy de España. Mi estilo de pelea pues, suele ser, meto bastante presión, suele ser agresiva, metiendo bastante presión, lanzando volumen. Y al final hago MMA, suelo pegar, suelo derribar y suelo ver a pegar. Pues mi última pelea con combate fue con Chris Guaso y la pelea duró poquito, duró un minuto 26 o 23 o así. Y no, bueno, eh, sabíamos que de iba muy bien, que, era, que boxeaba bien, entonces directamente le derribamos y hasta que no nos separó el árbitro, golpeaba hasta que no se separó el árbitro. Nunca había ido a derribar desde el principio, entonces bueno, pues aprendí que se puede. Mi nombre es Jordan Beltrán, tengo 32 años y soy de Puebla, México. En mi estilo de pelea, pues ahora... Eh, es un poco más calmado, es ver un poquito, analizar mucho más durante los rounds, durante la acción. Mi rival es un, es un chico que le gustan los golpes, él ya ha peleado también con mexicanos, ha peleado en esta empresa, analicé muy bien su estilo, creo que vamos a, a dar un buen, un buen choque de golpes, ¿no? Es un rival bastante duro, aguanta mucho golpe, mete mucha presión, tiene bastante ventaja, pero creo que técnicamente soy mucho mejor. Yo creo que voy a ganar, obviamente, esta pelea. Hice muchos sacrificios para hacer mi campamento previo a esta pelea. También tengo patrocinadores, gente que cree en mí, entonces no puedo perder este, este encuentro, ¿no? Sí, yo pienso que voy a ganar la pelea. Uno o los dos se va para atrás o no paramos de pegarnos. Sí, creo que va a ser una pelea bastante divertida. We are back. The big story, Jimmy Pace Jr. with a first round TKO over Big Al Gonzalez to win in a 175 pound catch weight fight. Coming up next, the most interesting man in Combate Global, the French Hawaiian Pierre Daguzan, back again in need of a victory. He will face the man from Monterrey, Nuevo Leon, Hector Ferral Perez, who has won five of his first seven fights and looking to be a, a real force here in the 135, 140 pound ranks. This is going to be at a catch weight of 140 pounds as we go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Héctor Ferral. We mentioned Monterrey. They have two fighters on this card. We'll see Daniela Hernandez a little bit later, but Hector Ferral making his way out here. Started to train after getting ready for a grappling tournament, was uh, introduced to the sport, and like so many before him, fell in love. Trains with Ragnarok MMA in Ciudad Juarez, Chihuahua, one of the very competitive border towns. Trains with Jair El Pantera Rodriguez. All his wins, Max, have come by way of first round TKO, and he does have a knockout power. He has a 24 second KO and can stand and bang when it gets really close to the pocket. He can brawl away. This guy a, means a lot of business inside La Jaula. First fight since February of this year as we go back to Lupe. Su oponente, Pierre Daguson. Pierre Daguzon, where do we begin with him? He went to China for a university exchange. He is a Frenchman, used to play semi-professional rugby in France. Trains with Gracie Technics in Hawaii with the likes of Hawaiian heavyweights Max Holloway and Yancy Medeiros. Although he is coming in, he needs a victory here. We saw him in the Copa Combate tournament, more recently losing to Alan Cantu in May. Well, this is a good fight for him. Uh, very evenly matched up. And look out for his very creativity as a fighter. He has great hands. You see some spinning back kicks out of this man. Very durable, good cardio, good wrestling. But hey, it's a must win for the man from Hawaii. There is the head to head, cara a cara. These two guys have been at it for a while. Uh, Hector Fernal also coming off a defeat. He is a one-inch height disadvantage to Daguzan and the French Hawaiian four-inch reach advantage. This is going to be at a catch weight of 140, and these guys obviously would like to project themselves at the bantamweight division. We are ready for the next fight out of the traps here on Combate. Let's go to Lupe Contreras.
Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas a un peso pactado a 140 libras. We continue with much more action. Three rounds at a catch weight of 140 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are, Richard Green, Ricardo Celis y Mark Streisand. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un combate global. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de rojo con blanco, presenting the blue corner, wearing red with white. Su peso oficial, 140 libras, his official weight, 140 pounds. Entra por octava vez a la jaula, con un récord de cinco victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the eighth time as a professional, with five victories against two losses. Oriundo de Tuxa Gutiérrez, Chiapas, y entrenando en Ciudad Juárez, Chihuahua, México. Héctor Ferrar. En la esquina opuesta, vestido de blanco con rojo y azul en the opposite corner, wearing white with red and blue. Detuvo la báscula a un peso idéntico de 140 libras. He tipped the scales at an identical 140 pounds en 13 combates. Mantiene un récord de 6 victorias y 7 derrotas en 13 pro bouts. He maintains a record of 6 victories against 7 losses. Radicando en Honolulu, Hawaii. Y oriundo de Versailles, Francia. The French Hawaiian. Pierre Dagusson. El referee. De Panama, Marcos Pérez. Marcos Pérez from Panama, the third inside the jaula. Okay, so, you already know the rules. I want a clean fight, okay? Follow me command all time, okay? Ya sabe las reglas, que una pila limpia. Se va a veces me comando en todo momento, okay? Yo creo que cuando es el momento, en sus esquinas. Hector Ferral. Salito, are you ready? He's also been uh, involved with American football for about three years, also a kickboxer, trying to be well-rounded in his MMA with the uh, the inverted red, with the top red and white hoops. Yeah, look for Pierre's good feints. Once he does that, he'll go and land either the right hand, the overhand right, and go to the ground for the wrestling. And Hector, I mean, this, this man right here is gonna just trade, exchange, He's a counter puncher. We'll stand in there and take a punch and hit you back with two or three. Pierre Daguzan, we have seen uh, in uh, some high profile spots here with Combate Global. One in three in his Combate career, May losing in a first round TKO to Alan Cantu, December of 2021, lost to Leo Muñiz in the quarterfinal as he sweeps the leg there and it gets right into the guard of Feral. Beautiful, grabbing that right leg and tripping him and taking him to the ground. Pierre here to, to do some damage here to the body, the ribs. Hector needs to move around that hip. Nagusan, you hear the corner tell him exactly where to stay. They like the positioning, but keep his head in a safe position. Now he's trying to clear the guard. Hector, good way of positioning himself. And all gets to up. his feet first, though. Good stuff. And both these guys, I, I think, though, if this fight does go the distance, that cardio. Good combination, and Daguzan a little staggered there. That, that, that cardio advantage goes to Daguzan. We've seen this man stand in there for three rounds and, and stay in the game. It, it's hard not to repeat when we see Daguzan, his interesting story, which has gone from France to China to Hawaii. He met his wife in uh, Beijing. She is Hawaii. They had a son, and he's been training MMA for 12 years, but his affinity with Hawaii is that overhand yep, there it is. right. He loves to throw that overhand right. One thing I've noticed from his game is that he's keeping keeping up those hands, covering that guard. He got caught with Munoz in the Copa Combate for keeping those hands down. He learned his lesson. Good exchange there. Hector Fedal, also a very interesting guy in his own right, has a biochemistry engineer degree and a doctor's degree from Universidad Autónoma de Ciudad Juárez. He's a professor. He's a professor. He likes to... He's a learned man. I mean... Biochemistry engineer, there's no easy, that's not an easy A. 
No. Gosh, I hated chemistry. <laughs> I don't even know where to start with that. We're the easy majors. There's underwater basket weaving. Doc was underwater that. basket weaving. That's, isn't that the, <laughs> the easy class you can take? Liberal arts, man. That's Liberal arts. One. Nice and well-rounded. <laughs> Daguzan keeps getting caught when he comes in. And again, Fedal very efficient and direct with his punches. Yeah, Hector needs to exchange. He needs to throw. He's being a bit conservative. Daguzan being the more the aggressor. Throwing in the overhand. Quick jabs, good feints. And when he does those feints, Hector's falling for it. He needs to follow through, work the body. Low down. He, I think he's standing up just a, quite just a bit. Just sit down a little bit and come in with that power. Sit down on those punches. Left hand over from Fedal, who after being taken down, seems to have gotten a, a better feel for this fight. Good combination. Daguzan on the run, gets out of dodge. I've seen Hector do that many times, and he does have that knockout power when he moves in fast. But that one, two, three, oh, no! Oh, that stunned right. him! Fedal groggy as he took that right hand. It was like the last possible movement. He's still not well. He's feeling it. He is still groggy. Woo. Daguzan's got to go for it. His corner is encouraging him. Spinning back kick there into the midsection. Is. Yeah, he gets flashy when he Another good blood. right. When he smells the blood, Max, he gets very flashy. And he can hit you with the spinning kicks, elbows. But that overhand right, he loves to throw it. Oh, Daguzan missed, and he paid a price for it. 30 seconds to go in this opening round. And, and I like the way he throws it. it, it it's, it's very... It's a, it's a different way that, that overhand right. It, it, it just curves. But man, Hector felt that one. Kick upstairs, Fidal. Peppering around. This is going to be a very tough round to call. Both guys have had their foot on the accelerator as we reach the end of the first round. Daguzan grabbing, I think, I think it's Yancey Maderos in his corner there, who is a decorated Ooh. UFC fighter. There was that early leg sweep. Great stuff, Max, taking that, that, some of the highlights from that first round. It was just great way of protecting himself, Pierre. Great guard. And this is an overhand right that rocked Hector. Kind of brought him back to Miami. He felt it but he lives to survive to the second round. Here for round number two, there is Hector Fedal. We saw, you know, the Marroquin brothers who are royalty in Monterrey MMA, and they are in the corner here for Fedal. Again, a long layoff for Fedal, who has had all his fights. He, he was fighting in 2018, took a break for two years, came back in 2021, did have a, a, a very good track record with finishing fights. Three TKOs, one submission in his five victories. There's that flashiness from Pierre, Max. Spinning back fist, maybe hit with a spinning kick. But what he needs to do that's been there, and, and I, I don't know, he just hasn't found a chance to land it, or he's just banking on his hands. But Hector's leg, since he's sitting down on those punches, is available there for an inside kick that could really break down Hector and could bring him to Pierre closely. And he could work on the body and break him down. But it's there, look at that wide stance from Hector. Wide open to, to land in an inside kick. Fedal, who, who throws so well inside, all three judges saw Daguzan victorious. Says a lot about that early takedown, but he did hurt Fedal as well. And we should, when you when you put that collectively, right call for the French Hawaiian to get the nod in round one. Now you saw that in exchange here. That's what that's Hector's fight. He likes to make you come inside and just stand and brawl. And when you put that man in there. He has the advantage. He, that, that's his fighting game. He likes to just stand and brawl. Pierre has a different type of stance. He's more technical. He uses the jab. Into the body by Feral. 
Here now just strategizing where he's gonna land that jab and follow up with that right hand or maybe something else and he has in his toolbox. Oh, that's that body shot. Just enough for Dago's unable to graze it. That, that's contact. Left hand by Fidel. This has turned into a, a striking stand-up fight. And I think that's what it's going to remain like, Max, because these two just love to strike, man. But not to, to, to get away from the cage, because these are professional fighters. They want to be fighters. But Hector Fidel is pursuing, as we point out, a postdoctoral degree. Uh, this is an impressive man. And then with the... the the world traveling of Pierre Daguzan. I mean, these are two, it, these are guys you'd like to have a beer with. <laughs> am, I, am I right? This is, or a cup of coffee for those or who don't Or a cup drink. of coffee. <laughs> Just an analogy. <laughs> Maybe a hot tea. There we go. Green tea's good. Uh, I might oh. need a hot tea after that Jimmy Pace <laughs> Jr. fight. I, mean, I lost, uh, lost a bit of a lung there. Incredible finish. As we're moving right along in the second round. This is better from Daguzan, Rodolfo. Last yes. time we saw him, he, he came out quick, and then he paid a heavy price for overextending himself. He looks a little more cautious, but at the same time, aggressive. And, and what, what I, I like is he's, he's being more protective of that chin, keeping up those hands. Because when he'll come in and throw that, that jab, that overhand, he gets the tendon a little loopy and, and, and exposes himself. So as long as he, he throws throws it and protects himself, he'll be okay. I like to, he's changing the levels, working the top, working the body. Very active, another combination, even doesn't hit the target, he's making Fidel think. Yeah, he has good feint and he is really throwing off Hector at times. Should mention uh, Fredal did fight David Solorzano. That was uh, at 135 pounds, one of the top five ranks in that division. That was July of last year. That was a unanimous decision for Solorzano. Not a bad defeat by any means. Yeah, Pierre, if Daguzan could just land in those inside kicks to that inner thigh, it'd be good for him. Hector, though, good way of defending. Daguzan's attempt for a takedown. As for Hector, just keep moving in and bring him into you so you could exchange. Yeah, again, he had that 24 second knockout and it, it occurred when he got in the pocket and just started exchanging. And then, look, he got caught. Pierre got caught there. And there's a big mark on the, uh, the forehead of Daguzan. Fedal is, the, it would appear, the better striker. Right. He comes in right route one, although it is Daguzan who hurt Fedal in the first round. Fedal has power, though. He has that power. You can hear the corner there telling him one, two, kick. Better second round for Fedal. He needs it to certainly put himself in a position to win this fight via decision. Heavy breathing by Daguzan. We saw him tired after the first round. He grabbed the top of the howl as he was trying to take as much air in as possible. This is the first year showing the back to your opponent. All right, so there we go. Let's look at the highlights here. Just, just exchanges from both men striking. It's a strike fest. It's pretty much what it is, and it's a great one to be exact inside La Haula. Daguzan once again throwing in that jab, looking for an opportunity to land the overhand right, but not in this instance for Rao. Once they got in that pocket, that's where he likes it to be, exchanging heavily with heavy hands. Back here for round three. Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman. We are getting you through the preliminary fights. Top of the hour, we'll go to a, a top tier main card for so many reasons. So many exciting fighters that we truly believe we will be talking about a lot in the months, weeks, years ahead. Daguzan to your left. It's a little short left jab here. We wait for that second round scorecard. It means everything, certainly for Fedal. I'm curious to see how that's going to turn out, man. The judges see that second round. 
saving that first, obviously. Daguzan had that shot. Good. And this Daguzan, the jab is working here, and I think yeah. he knows it. Right. And, and, and then once he throws, he continuously throws that jab. He goes with that right. But the, but the kicks, uh, they, they've been there. The inside, for that inside kick has been there all day long. He had, he's worked on the outside of that lead leg of, of Ferrar, but not the inside. I think he'll do quite well. And here's, here's the... Uh, Ferrar got even. it. Even. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. That makes third round a whole lot more interesting. And uh, this information can be shared with the fighters. The corners are informed. And I would imagine uh, both fighters are being told to go for it here. They One round go. to win it. Everything connecting by Fidel. They got to let it go. The jab there again for Dagusan. And you called it, Rodolfo. You said it's going to stay in the stand-up, and it has. Yeah, they, 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 they both like to just exchange. More so Feral and Daguzan just as well. He does have the the edge on the ground, but listen, when you're in there and you love to strike, let's go. Daguzan, who started his career five and one, getting a lot of publicity, was with Bellator prior to becoming a combate. But it, it's not fallen his way. Some close fights along that path. But if he wants to pursue this, he needs to get some Ws. Boy, they swam at the same time, and that's that right hand again. Big machete punch there by Daguzan. They didn't come in with lots of power, though. It was too close. They didn't have the chance to come in with that back leg, back leg power. Combination follow-up left hook there by Daguzan. It'll be interesting there to hear goes. that right hand connects what the corners say to their fighters about the urgency here in round three. But at this point, since you you know and maybe they do maybe they don't it's an even fight you got to start being creative start throwing in some new things that your opponent doesn't expect that was on for a second shot in for the double leg fredal had none of it shook it right off i love it for that to try to pull that off or he put his he tapped his right shoulder to pretend he was going to throw, but he came in with a jab. Fidel felt bad, thought it was a low blow. Daguzan said, no harm. Let's keep going as they both attack the lead leg. Every strike here counts in a fight this close. Every single one. And you have to be creative at that, this point to throw your opponent off. Good right hand, Fidel, and he put all the emphasis behind it. It's a good center of gravity. I, I, it's just amazing how you could throw your... And I was seeing the Jake Paul and uh, Anderson Silva fight. Silva tapped his foot. <laughs> to, to throw off Jake Paul. And I mean, that's just similar to what Farage just did. He tapped his shoulder, slapped it, and then followed in with that left to throw off his opponent. But he knew it wasn't a, a it wasn't an MMA fight. No, but unfortunately he, he did, for Anderson Silva. No, but he, he did it so he can take he could take Paul off to pretend that he was gonna throw it, but he didn't throw it. He connected with the left. Sometimes you got to be creative, Max. You know, you can connection, you, good right fit out. When you study tape, when you look at your opponent, oh, those hurt. You, you look at the habit that the fighter does, and especially as it gets later into the fight, they stick to that habit because that's what they're, they're just, it's just your instinct to do it. So that's why creativity comes into play as it gets closer to the end of the third round or whatnot because they're going to see new things. Yeah, but this is getting really wild here. Right. Well, at this point, you got less than about 30 seconds. You've got to go. It's kitchen sink time. But it's been like that for two minutes. Not, as, not exactly efficient. Precise is also out the window. Just trying to get as much points as you get in the eyes of the judges. And that's Fidel's fight. He loves that just exchange in the pocket. No distance, no nothing. Just Daguzan shoots. Nothing behind it, though. That may have came at a heavy price. That's Fidel's game right there. See, he's just... It's like a rock just standing there throwing at you. Boom. It seemed to me in that third round that Fedal was just a little bit quicker and may have given him the edge in what would be a come from behind victory. We'll get the official decision when we return. Massive fight for both these guys. The results hangs in the balance. We'll be back. We are back. This is going to be tight like a tiger. 
Who got the nod in the third round? We're about to find out. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Después de tres vueltas de mucha más acción, los jueces están de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas de 29 a 28. After three rounds of much more action, the judges are in agreement with identical scores of 29 to 28. All three in favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. Los tres a favor del ganador por decisión unánime de Tuxla Gutiérrez Chiapas. Hector Ferraz! A massive disappointment by Daguzan. Remember, he won the first round, but Ferral gets rounds two and three. He gets a nod from his hometown of Chiapas and improves to six and two. Questions for Daguzan, who had Ferral on the ropes. He just had that just that ray of hope in that first round, but after that, it was that exchange that they had that Hector just had the advantage. That's the type of fight that he wants. He called in Pierre so he could exchange, and he played his game. And let's take a look at some of the highlights here. It was here in the first round, catching that right leg, tripping him over. He tried to work the, green, the ground game. However, Ferrao was just too quick, got himself up, took the fight to the stand-up, got clobbed there a couple of times, but it was just a few here in that first round. We hits him with that right hand. He almost cleared it too, Fidel. Oh, man, yeah, he he just needed to just just go. You he know, let it all away. in. It was just left in there. But unfortunately, he couldn't finish it off right there in that first round. And then in the second, the third, this is the fight that he likes. Bringing in your opponent really closely and just lay the hands, let the hands go. That's the type of fight that is a brawler. Just going in is a... Scrap 30 boxing, pulling off everything fast hands, and he has a lot of power. And that's exactly what worked out for the Mexican who goes on and gets a victory inside La Jaula. Lots of questions to be answered. Pierre needs to look at that tape and see what he can do right next time. For Hector Fidal, he started his career 5-0. He lost his last two fights, including the one to David Solarzano. This one was big for him. This was a big fight for Pierre Daguzan, and he goes back to make some big decisions about his MMA career moving forward. Hector Fredal can enjoy the evening. Victorious here in this 140 pound catch weight matchup. We are closing in on our main card. Combate Global is live. We are back, the main event, top 10 matchup in the Adam Weight division. There is Andrea Gali Meneses at 105 pounds out of weight. She comes in at number seven. Daniela Tiny Mix Hernandez, the number four ranked Adam weight. And that's amazing. These are two undefeated fighters, yet there are three clear-cut fighters ahead of them. They know if they could win this fight, they will look ahead to a matchup against Ana Palacios at number one. Claire Lopez at two or Gloria Bravo at three. Marvin Chavez is gonna make his MMA professional debut. Standing in his path, Adam Ortiz, undefeated MMA fighter, to Lupe. Marvin Chavez. Marvin Chavez fighting out of Atlanta, Georgia. Just wrapping up his amateur career. His last fight was in 2019. So it's been a minute since he's seen any action inside the cage. Now as good a time as ever to get it going. And look at the certainly the lower part of the body. He's got quads. This guy's chiseled. That are just massive. He has like a football kicker's legs. This guy's a strong dude. He uh, just had a 10 month year old, 10 month old baby. So he's fighting for his baby tonight. Back to Lupe. Su contrario, Adam Ortiz. Adam Ortiz has had a taste of mixed martial arts. He's actually 2-0 in his career. Last fought in May, won via rear naked choke. Had a pretty busy Amateur career, 13 fights in total, but he has to be very optimistic about the way professional fight has started. This young man fighting out of 
Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, this man has a base in wrestling, but he said that he has evolved, considers himself now a well-rounded fighter. He loves the striking, so expect to see him very confident to let them hands go as we team these two young studs inside La Jaula for the first time. Head-to-head -head here, and uh, Chavez, who uh, wrapped up his amateur career in 2019 at the age of 17, makes his pro career at the tender age of 20. Ortiz, eight years his senior, has a three-inch height advantage and a one-inch via the reach. This will be in uh, 135 pound, as you can see, Chavez coming in over the limit. We're ready to fight. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción este duelo. Tres vueltas, división peso gallo. We continue with much more action this bout. Three rounds in the Bantamweight division. Los jueces son, the judges are, Mark Streisand, Vicente Rodriguez y Richard Green. Presentando a la esquina azul, vestido de rojo, presenting the blue corner, wearing red. Marcó un peso oficial de 139 libras y media. He tipped the scales at an official 139 and one half pounds. Esta noche, dentro de la jaula de combate global, hace su debut profesional tonight. Inside of la jaula, he is making his professional debut. Fighting out of the ATL, y puro Tampico, Tamaulipas, Mexico. Marvin Chávez. Su oponente en la esquina roja, vestido de negro con rojo y azul, is opponent in the red corner, wearing black with red and blue, su peso oficial, 136 libras, his official weight, 136 pounds. Entra a la jaula, buscando mantener su record invicto en dos combates profesionales tonight. He enters la jaula looking to remain defeated after two professional victories. De Tucson, Arizona, Adam Kid Solo Ortiz. El referee de Panama, Marcos Perez. Marcos Perez de Panama. The third inside the house. Okay, stop. Okay, just you already know the rules. You want to clean fight. Okay, follow me command at all time, okay? Ya sabe las reglas. Tiene una pelea limpia, okay? O veces me command en todo momento, okay? Choquen cuando si quieren. Es su esquina. Marvin Chavez getting directions in Spanish. He says he fights out of Atlanta. He trains out of Atlanta, but as you heard, Lupe originally from Tamaulipas in Mexico, left Salido. Mexico to train right. here in the USA like so many before him. And what well, part of the, the beauty of combate is that you're going to get better training in Mexico, in South America, in Europe. MMA is still in diapers globally, but we're seeing big changes as Chavez in red. Or some underhooks. Start off the fight here, and Max just considering Chavez's debut. You know, so much of the pressure that goes in. It's a big stage for you. With the lights, the camera, so much attention. You know, it's so different to, in, in, in the debut that you're doing at such a large scale. Yeah, interesting, the, the layoff. Mm -hmm. uh, well, he became a dad, right? He, 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 did, he does have a 10-month-year-old baby. That could kind of no take excuse, away. Uh, Rodolfo. Oh, come on, Max. You know what's up with that. And we hear a lot of the fighters, actually, when they have you know, children, they, they take some time off. And, and also just to focus on himself. And listen, your mind has to be there, Max. It, it, no matter how young or how long you've been in this game. Big forearm from Ortiz. It's a mental game. It's a big part of the mental game. You have to be in it if you want to compete. You can't just wake up and say, hey, I'm going to fight tomorrow. But a big oh, mark man. on the right eye of Chavez, and there's blood coming out. So that forearm caught Chavez, and it busted him open. Oh, Thankfully, man. it's below the eye, but it is nasty looking. These boys just are swinging for the fence. Look, Chavez just realized that he's got that cut. Oh, slip. Ortiz. Oh, look at those legs for Chavez. Those are a weapon in its own right. It's like a rugby player. Great elbows there, and now he has the full mount. He could work off of this. What a great debut will be for him. Uh, he's into victory. the mounts. He's cleared the guard of Ortiz, and now he can certainly do some damage. We talked about all that muscular frame on top of Ortiz. Ortiz wants no part of it. Oh, goes for the arm bar. Nope. Missed it. Out. Try to Single leg up. here, Ortiz. He might grab that leg there and trip him. Did he find that chance? Now is the opportunity to do so. Let's scoop him down. 
Into the guard of Chavez goes Ortiz, trying to clear it. Now he's got that arm trap. Ortiz may be in trouble. Ortiz may be in trouble. Big oh, leg. good shot. Maybe wants to open up that cut a little more. It's already gaping. Two and a half to go in the opening round. Another arm bar attempt from Chavez, who's got incredible dexterity and flexibility. Yeah, Ortiz, though, is just going to capitalize here and land some chance in that position. He's just going to wrestle here. Maybe come for the rear naked choke. Chavez made a mistake there. Chavez does have that chin down. The thing is that he has Mahala right next to him. It benefits. Ortiz. There you see the uh, camera on the goggles of Marcos Perez, AKA ref cam. Oh, what an elbow there. Look at that And dash. that cut, yeah. That is, that is deep oh. and profound and will require a lot of stitching. That flesh is just, yeah, it's, it's almost popping out. It's, it's pretty gruesome. We'll probably get a good look if you want a good look. Oh, he's became Spinning a great around wave. another arm bar. Great flexibility from Ortiz. I mean, this is a lot of catches, catch can right here. Going from one transition to another. The arm bar oh, this the, time there is, is deep. Ortiz he is may stuck. Have something. Pulls it out. Turning around, he's not letting go. Wow. Get that arm out of there. Get that arm out of there. I mean, that's a, he's already dodged it once. Oh, that hurt. He hit it right on the open wound. Man, Ortiz just lays down the hammer with those fists. And here it is, that some of that work. He tried to go for a half Nelson, and he tried to catch him in the rear naked choke. Ortiz, made, he does have that chin down, though. But this is non-stop activity. It's, uh, there is no rest here. Both these guys are, are diligently looking for a finish. Ortiz is just fishing for that rear naked choke. He's just waiting for Ortiz to make him a mistake. Another Chavez rear to make naked, a that was a little deeper. Chavez turns. Really impressed with both these guys. Very much so. The ground game has just been back and forth. Transition after transition, but good way of Ortiz. Oh, Chavez, Chavez, Chavez is now, nowhere to go. He ref spins. might step in right into the lion's den. Hey, but good, good stuff from Chavez for his debut. But that, that, that may be it. Talk to the referee. That may be it. Everything's hitting him. He's hurt from something. Yeah, he's turning up. He's, he's turning up. Still trying to move. The corner's trying to tell him you got 20 seconds. Stay in there. He's turning up. This is impressive. There Ortiz is. looks at the referee, and that's it. Ortiz a little trash talking, and then gives him the fist pump. Impressive from both guys, but Ortiz just a little bit better. And Adam Ortiz from Tucson, Arizona, now a 3-0 wow. fighter. And look away. Unless you're into that kind of stuff. Oh, man. Tengo que hacer un buen trabajo en este cierre de temporada para que me den, como quien dice, el pase directo ahora sí por el campeonato mundial. Es un oponente muy duro, que tiene hueso, tiene caído, está arraigado a la ciudad, le gusta pelear, le gustan los golpes, entonces será una guerra. Remember the name, Christian Fuas. Absolutely demolishing. We are back. Adam Ortiz is 3-0. And we get the official decision from Lupe Contreras. Una serie de golpes sin respuesta obliga al referee Marcos Pérez a parar la contienda con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos 48 segundos del primer episodio. A series of unanswered blows forces referee Marcos Pérez to stop this contest with an official time of 4 minutes 48 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of TKO, el vencedor por knockout técnico. Still undefeated. Kid Solo, Adam Ortiz. Training out of Apex MMA. He's getting great training from that crew. Father of three, another child on the way. And he'll be able to celebrate with his young family. A fighter with so much yet to give. Remember the name when 2023 rolls around. Adam Ortiz. We're getting ready for the main card. Ortiz carrying both flags. We're very proud of the Mexican-American community on the Combate Global roster. He got a little knock there on his right cheek as yeah. well. Here's what lies ahead. 
all three of these fights have incredible redeeming qualities. Jordan Beltran fighting maybe for his MMA career against the hugely impressive Tino Guilarans. Jose Ferreira from Chile, 9-0 against one of the hot new names for Venezuelan MMA, Genier Penagos. And there it is, 105 pounds. You would never know it. These two women can get after it. Andrea Meneses and Daniela Hernandez. First things up, the very impressive Spaniard, Tino Guilarans, to see if he can keep that momentum going against the hard-hitting Bull Beltran. My name is Genier Penago, I have 26 years old and I am from Caracas, Venezuela. I started to train MMA at 15 years old. I did karate since 7 years old, but at 15 years I decided to do MMA to try with a friend and I didn't stop. I like the fight of the feet. I like the fight of striking, of boxing, but I'm a very good fighter. I think I'm a very good fighter. I have a very good fight, a very good jiu-jitsu. I have a very good fight, a very good jiu-jitsu. I have a very good fight, a very good jiu-jitsu. I have a very good fight, a very good jiu-jitsu. Lo he usado en algunos combates, pero, pero como tal, el combate que me gusta es de pie. Lo que me diferencia a mí como peleador es que desde que empieza el combate hasta que termina, siempre estoy buscando la finalización, siempre, en todo momento, desde el principio a fin. Y eso es algo que ninguno de mis contrincantes puede decir lo contrario. puede venir. No tengo nada que decirle a mi oponente. Honestamente, eh, para mí, es un atleta que me están poniendo al frente y que tengo que arrollar. Después del combate, le, le daré la mano, hablaremos y le haré mis respetos. We are in Miami, of course we are. Where else would we be? Winding out 2022 the best way we know how, with mucho mas acción. La Jaula has been set alight already. Three big fights in the preliminary cards, some big performances. And we can truly say without hesitation, the best lies ahead inside the glorious La Jaula. Ready for combate. Glad you could join us, Max Pretos, Rodolfo Roman, calling all the action for a global audience here on Paramount Plus and wherever you are, welcome in to Friday Night Fighting. This is the main card, the main event. Undefeated Adam Waits, Andrea Meneses, Daniela Hernandez. Who gets to pick a fight against the top three in one of the very good divisions of combate? Genier Penagos, Jose Ferreira, all South American matchup. The big news there is Ferreira coming off a victory over Patrick Lehan is 9-0. 10-0 sounds great, but it won't be easy. And we'll get started with Jordan Bull Beltran and Tino No Mercy Guilarans. An international event for sure, Rodolfo. Absolutely, and I'm really looking forward to seeing Ferreira back again inside La Jaula that first time, man. It was so impressive. Training out of the Valley Flow striking. But Beltran, Chile Dance, is on deck. We're ready for action, which means we go to Lupe Contreras. Entrando a la jaula, Jordan Beltran. Jordan Beltran is no doubt a talented fighter. He needs a win. He has uh, been quite decorated in the past. He has 12 professional fights. He has finished 11 of them, but back-to-back -back defeats has him somewhat hanging over the precipice. This is massive. He's the underdog. And when everyone, including us two, talking about Tino Guilarans, that ramps it up a little bit more for this man. He's he took it very seriously here. He said, okay, I have two losses back-to-back. -back. I need to do something. So what did he do? He went and spent about a month and change in Brazil in a fight camp to fix his holes and gaps 
and make sure that he gets that victory inside La Jaula this time around against a new evolutionized Tino de Lawrence. His opponent, Tino No Mercy Gilarance. For his introduction, we go back Su to Lupe. Oponente, Tino Gilarance. Last week we were here with Campbell McLaren. He said MMA is forgiving, or at least it should be. Just because you take a defeat doesn't mean it should completely curtail your career. Tino Gilarance lost to Jair Perez in combate in November 2018. Split decision, by the way. A year later, in May, he lost to Jordan Mapa in a doctor's stoppage. Stepped away from combate and worked on his craft and got things well. In fact, he comes into this match three straight victories, three straight first round knockouts. He's living his best life inside the Haula. Such a difference in his fight the last time we saw him in here. And that's exactly what he said. Look, I needed to go back, needed to make some adjustments. And this is what you got. You got a savage inside La Jaula defeating Chris Boasso in a very quickly fashion. He's oozing confidence right now. We've seen that with so many other combate fighters where something clicks. It's a lot of hard work, it's dedication. He said it in the interviews before where he took down Boasa and he said to himself, and we love the honesty, I proved myself I could do it. I know I can do it. Now he wants to keep on doing it. Head to head, gotta a gotta. Three years, the senior is Beltran. One inch height advantage, two inch via the reach. We are at a catch weight of 150. Both guys making it under comfortably. We are ready for the introductions. The main card has begun. Combate Global live all over the world, including here on Paramount Plus. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Las reglas oficiales de la jaula, tres vueltas de cinco minutos, tres jueces utilizando el sistema de 10 puntos. Este duelo pactado a 150 libras. This bout at a catch weight of 150 pounds. Los jueces son, the judges are, Vicente Rodríguez, Richard Green y Ricardo Celis. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido del tricolor mexicano, verde, blanco y rojo. Introducing the blue corner. Wearing the colors of Mexico, green, white and red. Su peso oficial, 148 libras y media. His official weight, 148 and one half pounds. Entra por vigésimo segundo combate aquí en la jaula con 12 victorias y 9 derrotas. Y entras la jaula for the 22nd time as a pro. With 12 victories against 9 losses. De Puebla, México. Jordan Bon Beltran. En la esquina opuesta, vestido de amarillo in the opposite corner wearing yellow, marcó un peso idéntico de 148 libras y media. He registered an identical 148 and one half pounds. Entra por séptima vez a la jaula con cuatro victorias y dos derrotas. He enters la jaula for the seventh time as a pro with four victories against two losses. De Madrid, España. Tino, no mercy. Hilarans. El referee, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, the third inside La Jaula. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. If you want to touch him up, go ahead. Come out, fight. Judge, judge, judge. Bull Beltran. No mercy, Hilarans. As Lupe pointed out, those yellow shorts, those glorious Spanish combate attire that just pop off the screen. We are underway. Something to keep an eye on, Jordan Beltran. He hits hard. You'll hear it with the fists. And Tino Gilarance looking to be the latest Spanish fighter to make a breakthrough. We saw it last week with Fabio Sintes. We may see it with Andrea Meneses. Spain is definitely making some major inroads. Beltran getting in close quarters, making contact. Well, one thing that Beltran should have learned from that last fight against Jose Mariscal is keep your hands up. He got knocked out with a question mark kick. Oh. But now Dino going for the ground with a wrestling. It's exactly what he did to Boasa last time around. Waited just a couple of seconds and took the fight to the ground. He almost drove him through the howler. Yeah, so much confidence. We got to see if he's keeping going. I could not have been more impressed by a fighter than Tino Hilarance last time. It was clinical, it was punishing as he took Boasa into the very deep end of the pool. But this is Wilbert Trans. Maybe working at Kimura there. Yep, that's where his uh, fight camp that he did in Brazil comes into play because we know in Brazil they got some top notch Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, of course, hence Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. He went in to spend his time out there. 
And this is what he can do. He said, hey, okay, maybe Tino does have the advantage in the wrestling, oh, but what can he do? He's got it! He may have Bear something! Bear Thine has got oh, it! Oh, fuck, oh, oh, he turned he around and he He's tagging on somehow! Yeah, he tapped! No? How he, he, if he didn't tap, I don't know how he did it. Beltran has got him completely controlled. In on the neck. Oh, look at that great posture from Metra pushing his hips. Tino gave the thumbs up. Wow. But lovely, he wrapped those legs right in the head. Wow. How tough are these guys? I mean, he almost took that arm out of the socket. We we, we have seen fighters' arms snap from a yes. Kumar attempt. We happened earlier this year with Irlanda Galindo. Irlanda Galindo, yeah. yes. But where can... There's three minutes to go. Hilanant has nowhere to move. He's stuck. He's stuck. That's not going to be. He's got to worry about the arm, correct? That's absolutely. <laughs> that's what he needs to protect first. He doesn't want to break it. But right now, you just have to hope He's that out. he lets go. There you go. But that's amazing what you said about Beltran going to Brazil and putting whatever he learned into his fight. And there it is. That's that's just uh, what occurs when you spend that time. And then now, Dino with a chance here to like guillotine choke. Got a pretty good hold there. Yeah, I can't see from this he's angle. Under the, he yeah. is under the chin of Beltran. And now, he and now he's popping it. up the hips, Max. He, no, oh. good way of taking him down. Beautiful transition game. Still has the uh, guillotine holding. Beltran trying to soften up the midsection. Just can't see from this angle. I'm sure he has his chin down. He's still breathing. He's not choked out yet. He let on sets a chance to collect himself, too. His arm's got to be hurting. He looks up at Alan Abeles. Beltran, what does Beltran do to get out of this predicament? Beltran needs to, number one, keep that chin down and then grab that, that grip that Dino has for that guillotine choke. Work that body right there. He's doing what he needs to do, attacking the body Listen to, to the loosen breathing. him up. Yep. I mean, I, again, I can't see from that angle, but it almost seems like he, he has, he does not have the chin down. How strong is Hilarance to hold it? It's that steady. You can hear the breathing. Max, he may be, he may be, he may be out. I, 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 just, I just can't see it still from this up. angle. He's arching his back, so he's still alert. This is crazy. I mean, this is some. He, he can sleep, see? He's asleep? Yeah, see? I, I, yeah, no, the, I, are you breaking right? him up? No? <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. And Beltran popping away. We get to the stand up game. So, Gino Hilerans, his nickname, No Mercy. He would never stop fighting when he was in Barcelona. He, he is from Madrid. And then the crowd would go, Sin Piedad, Sin Piedad, which means No Mercy. Change it to English, which sounds probably oh. a little better. One of those rare expressions that sounds better in English and Spanish. Dina needs to get that guard up. Jordan sneaking in those fists. Now Jordan feeling a little confident with his boxing. He Jay put his hand down. He let that strikes me. He's so confident, maybe it's too confident. Yeah. You don't want to be too confident against the Beltran. Yeah. This guy has uh, power in those fists. Good way of tricking him down. That's that wrestling, man. Such a good improvement. But see, Beltran's okay, he's got the wrist though. He's 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 great with the wrestling, but Beltran with his jiu-jitsu, with the grappling, is so good transitioning himself, finding opportunities, finding some opportunities for Kimoros, which Jordan Beltran and, now dropping oof. some elbows. He almost worked that Kimura again, yep. or yep, in the Americana. He's uh, got that wrist control, and Hiladans now respects that jujitsu game. We're going to get to the end of this first round somehow. All right, let's go. Pop, 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 and pop. Alan Abelis will break him up, but the bell will ring here shortly. There it is. This was some beautiful mixed martial Ooh. arts. Look at how it was locked. I don't know how Tino was unable to tap. He looked like he was willing to break his arm to yeah, stay in this fight. Yeah, uh, very flexibility and a lot of a lot of heart. And then here, Beltran keeping himself, positioning himself, handing out to that guillotine choke, got away from it, and then the exchange. Good stuff so far. You can see the improvement from both. Seconds out, seconds out. 
We are back. It's really remarkable that both these fighters were alert, getting coaching in between, not breathing heavily when we saw that round that we just saw. And it says a lot about their fitness. These guys are flying out of the gates again for round two. For Bertrand, what he loves to do, he loves to come in with that left hand. He'll come in. And, and he'll tell you, because he kind of lifts it up to let you know that he's going to come and hit you with it. Big okay. smile from Beltran. Yeah, he's very from confident. But these are two confident dudes in there. They almost got into a clinch for a moment, and then they reconsidered. And how about that? Beltran comes in and <laughs> feels that right hand. Beltran with the upper hand. That's that big for right. him. Yeah. He gets the win. He gets the first round nod, I should Ooh. say. Good jab there, Hilaranz, a couple times. Yeah, good way of Beltran, though, pairing that shot from Hilaranz. Just the body language of Hilaranz just screams confidence. Just sits there, he's comfortable Ooh. in his own skin. Yeah, but Beltran getting some good that, shots. Yeah, he, that, he may have to check that a little bit. That, that's what he needs to be cautious, because he'll throw in that left hand and he'll keep that right hand down. If Gideon can really time it well, he hits him with an uppercut, that could be it. This is much better Beltran than we saw in those two defeats recently. He looks like, clearly he's put his work in. We talked about going to Brazil. He is from Puebla. He has a young child named Luciano. He moved from Puebla to Colina. It's a 10 hour drive. Wanted to raise his child there. His wife is from there. So this is a good dude who uh, thinks of family first, but still in the fight game, he uh, is making some big sacrifices. The one thing he does, Max, and of course when we get there, he'll he'll bring a toy. Uh, when the, they're going to raise the hand to announce the winner, always keeping his son in his heart and in his mind when he fights. Oh, ran into that left of Beltran. Hard-hitting guys, Beltran in particular. You can oh, hear it. Oh, that he got stopped hit with him. A, oh, oh. Stoned him there. Yeah, Beltran knows he got hit with a spinning elbow, man. Night wins going to the ground. Yeah, that that elbow. In fact, it might have cut him. There's some blood there. I'm, I'm not sure if if it's from Beltran. It must. Yeah, it's from. It has to be from Beltran. I think it was that elbow, Max. Holding on. Yeah, he's, Beltran is leaking. Beltran goes to his knees. He's still so active in those positions. And there's the blood. You can see it on the left arm of Hilaranz. If you get a different angle, we'll be able to see where it's coming from. I'm not sure if it's coming from the forehead or from the nose. A lot of blood coming out of Beltran. Watch out there for maybe a knee from Hilaranz. I guess uh, Beltran just trying to take this fight to the ground, and he, and he had success. Into the guard. Beltran oh, is wait, working wait, wait. on winning okay, this so second right, round. That's that, that's that training he did in Brazil, Max. You see the improvement on the ground game. We know that he has great boxing, but he's running into trouble here, keeping his neck in there. He managed that this guillotine attempt in the first round. It's a tough spot for Hilaranz with him back flat out to the canvas. And we, this is why you love this sport, Rodolfo, is Hilaranz had all the momentum, and now he's got some confidence, but Beltran reinvented himself, and we're seeing that. And he's You're winning this here. fight right now. You're seeing it here. Look at um, that blood. It looks like yeah. almost like a Ric Flair job. But that is all <laughs> legit. No razor blades. Whatsoever. It's not a razor blade, it's an elbow. That's what cut him open. Oh, that's a lot of blood on Hilaranz's chest now, coming from the brow of well, Beltran. I'll, I'll tell you, that blood probably helped Beltran to escape. Oh, oh, no! Can't do that. 12 to oh, 6. No 12 to 6. <laughs> oh, he that, said he was okay. Alan Abelis did not stop the fight. Protect yourself at all times, Max. This is gut check time now for Hilanans as we approach the end of round two. The best we've seen Jordan Beltran in a long time. Look for this some elbows here. Seventh fight with Combate. Uh -huh. 
Oh, where we are positioning himself here. Oh, oh they got to be a naked joke. Man, I'm telling you, that's that jujitsu. He did great work. Although Dino does have the chin down, maybe not. On. May Five survive. Seconds. He's on the clock. Alan Abelis is tagged in there. And three. Is he out? Oh, he oh, might out. be out. He's out. He's, he's out. out. Wow. Dino Hilarazzi oh, is out. Oh. Jordan Beltran oh, beat the man. clock. The biggest win of his career. He put in the work. And it showed off. A bloodied fighter that put in the work takes the victory home. Wow. He was trying to beat the clock. And I don't know, Dino Hilalans had no idea how no. close he was. He knew he was close to the end of round two. And then he went limp. Wow. Unbelievable fight. And we see the ebbs and flow of mixed martial arts illustrated in these two rounds. <laughs> we are back, Tino Hilaranza recovering, although I am sure devastated to see his three fight winning streak come to an end. Three fight win streak where he won via TKO in the first round. Wow, what, what a way to end it. And just goes to show you Bertrand, he dedicated himself. He said, okay, I need to make some changes. I'm gonna take myself to a different country, Brazil, put in the work and there's that Gillet, the rear naked choke. Yeah, it, right at the final yeah, he second. He tried to ride it. He tried to ride it, wait for the bell, but he just couldn't make it. And this one just went straight down to sleep. What a moment for this man. Real good dude as well as we go to Lupe Contreras. This combat termina con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos 59 segundos del segundo episodio. This bout concludes with an official time of 4 minutes 59 seconds of round number 2. Your winner, by way of technical submission, el vencedor por su misión técnica, Jordan Bol Beltran. Been fighting since 2015. He first fought for Combate in 2018. This is his biggest win. I ain't even looking at the records. Mark it. Huge upset over Tino Hilarantz. Much more coming your way on the main card. Bueno, mi nombre es José Ferreira y soy de Temuco, de, de Chile. Mi estilo de pelea cuando empecé sí era bastante eh, energético. Me costaba controlar mi, mi ansiedad y con el tiempo eh, lo pude canalizar mi energía y repartirla durante los tres rounds. Así que ahora, claro, soy, sigo siendo explosivo, pero pillo los momentos para hacerlo. La verdad, mi pelea pasada con Patrick eh, fue bastante, bastante fuerte, fue bastante a la par, 50-50 creo yo. Yo había visto que Patrick eh, tenía muy buen boxeo, era un peleador completo, pero al momento de la lucha y en el suelo me di cuenta que era un peleador completísimo. Así que nada, pues estoy muy feliz de haberle ganado porque era un, era un, un buen representante. A mí el próximo año, la verdad, lo que me gustaría hacer es hacer una tercera y una cuarta pelea y a pelear por el cinturón. Tengo la mira a Púas, porque él está en un lugar donde a mí me gustaría estar simplemente, nada personal. ¿Qué pienso de mi oponente, Genier? Es que es un buen rival, viene con, una buena, eh, con un buen récord de 7 y 2, 7 ganadas, 2 perdidas. Es venezolano, es campeón de un evento de allá y tiene 26 años, eh, tiene dos años más que yo, entonces estamos los dos subiendo y va a ser un buen encuentro porque somos dos peleadores muy agresivos, muy completos y que... Así como yo lo veo a él, él quiere dar la vida igual que yo, así que va a ser una buena pelea. A mi oponente que se prepare como nunca porque en realidad yo me estoy preparando como, como siempre. A lot of blood has been spilt this evening on that jaula, uh, including from the man who was just victorious, Jordan Bull Beltran, who uh, we said he put the work in and he illustrated it inside the jaula. Coming up, we're going to get a look at Jose Tiro Loco Ferreira, 9-0 out of Chile, fighting in the lightweight division after beating Patrick Lehan. The next up, the challenge from Venezolano, Genier Penagos. 
Seven wins in his nine professional bouts. Pretty quality co-main event that's coming your way next inside La Jaula. We didn't have Ferreira on uh, the combate map, but the victory in impressive fashion over Patrick Lehan changed all of that. A big spot for Benagos. Good stuff, and he's coming out of that camp of slam where we had uh, Eric Biasmil compete here in Combate Global from Venezuela as well. Now, we were going to those elbows. Yeah, you can't we, do tough to six. He could have get been the a point, point deduction, deduction we yeah. were about to find out, but we never got to the third round. Right. I, and I imagine the Dino Hilarant's camp is going to have some discussions about that. Because there was no stoppage, and Alan Abella said, "No, we're, well, but we're still the thing fighting. is, okay, so, but the thing is, technically, a referee can deduct a point without stopping, unless there is injury, right? There, there, there's, Dino said, "I'm okay." Uh, we we saw it previously where uh, one of the fighters grabbed the the, the howla and a referee took the point, but the fight continued. But let's go to the highlights here. Dino going for the takedown right from the start hoping to finish off the fight real early like he did against Chris Proasso, but that wasn't the case. Beltran, sharp boxing. We know that he has that here. He's very confident with that left hand. How he comes in very aggressive. But the story was not the boxing. It was the work that he put when he went that to that fight camp in Brazil in that ground. But look at that spinning elbow to the chin of Beltran. Then Beltran switching gears, taking the fight to the ground, scooping up that left, that right leg and bringing him down. And then it was two, it was like two, three elbows, 12 to six elbows to the head. Yeah, it wasn't an isolated incident. Right. They were... But again, Allen can, or the referee can allow the fight to continue without stopping the fight, unless there is injury. Now, if we would have gone from that transition from the second to the third round, that is what we would have found out if a point were was deducted. But since Tina was okay, the fight continued. Such an intriguing matchup, and to see the confidence that Tino Hilarans had coming in, this was supposed to be the crowning achievement. This was supposed to be a victory where he could pick his spot in 2023 against any opponent. He would have been this irresistible force Big favorite against Jordan Beltran, who saw his career heading in the wrong direction. And in an instant, it really wasn't an instant. It was two thorough rounds. Remember, Beltran won the first round and looked like he was on his way to winning the second right when he finished it via rear naked choke. Such impressive stuff from Beltran. One more card remains on the 2022 calendar, and it will be El Puas Perez. 10 and 1 will fight Gilbert Ordonez Huila. Maritza Sanchez, the number one female flyweight, will also be on that card. Ernesto Ibarra, highly ranked flyweight on the men's division, also. It's going to be really good. We end with the bang. We knew we were going to have some good action. We've had it. We still have two massive fights coming your way, including three undefeated fighters. We know two of them could stay that way. At least one of them will. But we just don't know. And the reason we don't know is what we've already seen. Jose Ferreira looking to reach uncharted waters for many in mixed martial arts. To start your professional career 10-0, he has that opportunity as he faces another talented fighter coming out of Venezuela in a growing fight scene, Genier Benagos. Big fight in the lightweight division. Let's get a closer look at these two fighters. Chile versus Venezuela, Ferreira contra Penagos. Con mi padre desde pequeño tengo muy lindos recuerdos con él viendo las películas de Rocky Balboa entonces desde pequeño siempre aspiré como ser un campeón, tener un cinturón, pelear con gente más fuerte que yo y probarlo. Mi nombre es Genier Penagos, tengo 26 años de edad y soy de Caracas, Venezuela. Pues le ha pasado con mi bastantes errores, así que todos esos pequeños detalles que pueden hacerte perder la pelea eh, los estoy sacando y los estoy mejorando. Mi nombre es José Ferreira. Tengo 24 años y vengo del sur de Chile. A mí me gusta la pelea de pie. 
Creo que va a ser un choque de estilos, que va a ser un striker contra un luchador. Y va a ser un buen encuentro porque somos dos peleadores muy agresivos, muy completos y que así como yo lo veo a él, él quiere dar la vida igual que yo, así que va a ser una buena pelea. Se pueden esperar un peleador completo, un peleador con mucha garra, un peleador con ganas de dejar su país en alto. Es una pelea explosiva, les recomiendo que no pestañeen, siempre estoy buscando la finalización y en cualquier momento puede venir. Entrando a la jaula, Genier Penagos. Genier Penagos coming in. His last fight, June in Venezuela. He's only fought in Venezuela, which could be a huge MMA market. It is certainly lagging behind what we have seen in places like Argentina and Chile. And he's even said that. He's, as a Venezuelan, we can't fight in our country. In order to pursue the dreams of mixed martial arts, we go to Argentina, we go to Uruguay, we go to Brazil to get fights. That's what he's done. And now he gets to come to the United States. This is his big opportunity. He also did do some work training here at the Kill Cliff FC camp in Florida. But this is his biggest opportunity yet, fighting inside La Jaula for the first time. We go back to Lupe Contreras. Su oponente, Jose Ferreira. Another South American who had to go elsewhere to get that training for Ferreira. He has been yet the latest Chileno to go to Valley Flow striking in Chicago. It's paid off for some. He is hoping to be the latest and incredibly without much fanfare, he was 8-0. Then he gets the victory over Patrick Lehan, who is a highly regarded fighter here in the 145-pound category. And now he's 9-0, can go to 10-0 tonight. Man, this guy is just, he's a savage inside La Jaula. I was really impressed when he took on Patrick Lehan. He has great fast hand, great wrestling. He's just very quick. And a credit goes to that work he puts in the Valley Flow striking with the likes of Enrique Baby Bull Gonzalez and so many more. Two Continuamos. Two very young fighters here. Ferreira, just 24, two years younger than Benagos, both even on height. Distinguished, a, a definitive reach advantage for Ferreira by three inches. This is going to be in the lightweight category. Both guys making weight. Let's go for the official announcements of the particulars of Penagos and Pereira, Lupe Contreras. Continuamos con mucha más acción. Tres vueltas, división, peso ligero. We continue with much more action. Three rounds in the lightweight division. Los jueces, the judges. Mark Streisand, Vicente Rodriguez y Richard Green. Presentando la esquina azul, vestido de amarillo. Presenting the blue corner, wearing yellow. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 156 libras on the scale. He registered an official 156 pounds. En su décimo combate a nivel profesional. Con siete victorias y dos derrotas, he enters la jaula. For the 10th time as a pro. With seven victories against two losses. Representando a Caracas, Venezuela. Genier. Batosai Penagos. Su contrario en la esquina roja, vestido de azul, is opposition in the red corner, wearing blue. Marcó un peso oficial de 155 libras y media. He registered an official 155 and one half pounds. Esta noche entra a la jaula de combate global. Invicto en nueve combates profesionales tonight. He enters la jaula undefeated in nine professional bouts. De Temuco, Chile. And fighting out of Chicago, Illinois. Jose Tiro Loco Ferreira. El referee de Panama, Marcos Pérez. Marcos Pérez de Panama, the third inside the jaula. Those three screams are better than a cafecito, right? That woke me up. It took the words off my mouth. <laughs> I need to hire Jose as a hype man. <laughs> <laughs> that was tight quarters. Message received. Carlito, Carlito. We are underway, Penagos in the yellow, which, which you will see in the Venezuelan flag. Will we see that stand up fight? And Penagos active combining to catch a, a glance of Ferreira. 
Right, Bernagos loves to finish the fights. He has great stand-up, especially that boxing. He's very confident. If he starts feeling that vibe, he might even get a little flashy. He starts to do some very charismatic stuff inside the Howla. As for Ferreira, he's fast, aggressive, great striking, great ground and pound. And he'll hit you with some creative stuff. He might throw in them some spinning fists if he's feeling it. But great, fast, strong fighter out of Chile. This should be a great fight, but the advantage does go to Ferreira if it goes to the ground. Patrick Lehan was the best fighter. Oh. He saw a flying knee as he combines, and they get into a shoot situation. What impressed you from Ferreira in that Lehan fight, specifically in where he was an unknown quantity and convincing in that win? It, 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 he was able to read Lehan so well in the boxing because we know how good he is in the stand-up game, but he was able to break down Lehan and take him to the ground. And credit to Lehan, he, he did what he had to do on the ground, transitioning. But Ferreira just had a field day. He just really had his hand on Lehan, couldn't allow him to do anything. He cut, you know, he's so quick on his feet with his footwork. Ferreira just found a way to cut him. He just couldn't do anything to him. He just couldn't connect. Ferreira creeping up there. This is so big in Combate Global because we say it's fighter versus fighter. It's country versus country. In Venezuela and Chile, these guys are the beginning of that culture. These are guys that could go back there and develop the next fighter in a few years. There are young kids in these countries tuning in. What is this MMA all about? I'm interested. They see this and they see a pathway. So it is, it's significant in so many ways because there could be that pathway to, to glory, to big money, to main events. The problem is, you know, fighters like Benagos in Venezuela, he might not have the sparring partners, the training partners, because MMA is so young in a country like Venezuela. So he has to leave the country to train. Yeah, you can go compete in Brazil and Uruguay and so forth, but all the work is done in the gym. Look what happened to Jordan Bertrand. He had to leave his camp. He had to leave Mexico to go you perfect some of his skill in Brazil. You gotta find an edge. These guys have done it. Oh, look at that slam, man. I mean, I'm telling dumb. you. He's just he's a strong good. dude, man. Yeah, he's this guy's strong, impressive. And he, he has put, he's, he's a seatbelt right now on uh, Benagos, creeping up, beautiful balance. He, he extends those legs and it's almost like a, a crab. And look how he positions his head to land in the shots, right to the face or to the body. It's so exciting to see these fighters in these situations. They have come from relative obscurity as he gets into side control. Both these guys, neither of them really go the distance all that often. Nine fights for Tiro Loco Ferreira. He has finished six of them. Benagos, nine fights. He has finished five of them. Look at Benagos. I mean, uh, Ferreira. 90 seconds left, opening round. Putting all that body weight on Benagos, not allowing him to do, just pinning him. Pinning him like a poster on a wall. Now he gets to do shots. some damage as he's got that right wrist control of Benagos. You see, this this is this is where that 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 wrestling training comes in play. You know, Benagos just looked at his corner to see to listen what he can do. From he seems a little puzzled. Dropping in under a minute to go. He has teaches martial arts down in Chile. He's cleared the guard, oh, he's into the mount. the mount. Now it's survive mode, back. he gives up the back. Big trouble here for Penagos, and I flatten him out. Uh oh. This could be dangerous waters for the Venezuelan making his debut in the hall. Oh, maybe Marcos stop Venez is gonna stop this. Maybe stop, he's, he's not protecting himself, no he's turning to go. himself, that's it. He's gonna stop it. No, he turns. Oh. Still going, oh, he gave Penagos a chance up. to breathe. But he can't, he's gonna is. stop. There it is. Absolutely magnificent. This guy gets better every time. Wow. Can you say a perfect 10? 10 and 0 for Tito Loco. He makes it look easy. Wow. He just worked it down. Chipped away, chipped away, found the opportunity, and with 20 seconds on the clock, finished the job. Took him down, pinned him to La Jaula. Positioned his knee so he can't get away. Used his body weight so well. Man, 
I think that was, uh, was that Ignacio Bahamunda? <laughs> By the way, I was kind of impressed with Penagos. I thought he had a good fight. It's just right, it's a different if it kept class standing. of fighter. If, yeah. if it kept standing. The Chilean flag, full mast as we've seen so much. Remember this name, Jose Tiro Loco Ferreira, the real deal, Holyfield. A big thank you. He says he's got his eye on Puas Perez, perhaps Baby Bull Gonzalez. And we can only lick our chops at the prospects of those fights. To Lupe. El referee Marcos Perez detiene el combate con un tiempo oficial de 4 minutos 39 segundos del primer episodio. Referee Marcos Perez stops this contest with an official time of 4 minutes 39 seconds of the opening round. Your winner, by way of technical knockout, el ganador por knockout técnico. Still undefeated, El Tiro Loco, Jose Ferreira. Look how good that record looks. You know why it looks good? Because you don't see it that often. And that right there, Max, the man with the green is Ignacio Bahamond. It's one of the top fighters coming out of Chile, training out of Valley Flow Striking. And right next to Jose Ferreira, you're in good hands. Top-notch fighters right there, guys. And Mike Aframowitz also there, sharing the moment, who makes everything click for combate. Mike is uh, a mixed martial arts genius. As we get to this highlights, I did want to say something that Ferreira mentioned about the Patrick Lehan fight. He said, I made many mistakes. I need to remain from in honest to my game. I think he did that. I, I, it also says this guy is not satisfied with being good. He wants to be great. And that's when you know when you're a good fighter, when you're never satisfied, even if you win. Just look, taking him down, just punishing him on the floor. Benagos just couldn't find an opening, an opportunity. At that point, Ferreira just looked up at the ref and said, dude, he's not doing anything. Are you going to stop it? Just a few seconds afterwards, though, referee Marcus Perez just stepped in and stopped the fight. Great work from Jose Ferreira. This guy is a stud. I think Penagos has a, a future here as well, but this is a different class of fighter in Jose Ferreira. Wow, great Ten. stuff from that young man. 10 and 0, man, that is sweet. 10 and 0. I mean, it just, it's one of those things that you see on a graphic, you know, it grabs your attention. 10 and 0, or maybe a stat line that sticks out, but that one certainly does. It sounds a lot better than 9 and 0, we know that. <laughs> 9 and 0 sounds really good. As you can see, the uh, mismatch in the stat line, 52 of 98.1%. Someone would ask, how come you couldn't go 100%? Not I! Two takedowns were huge. Tiro Loco Ferreira. Chi, 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 le, 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 viva Chile. Soy Andrea Meneses, tengo 25 años y vengo de, ese, de España a Barcelona. Mi apodo es Cali, que es la diosa de la destrucción hindú. Y bueno, todo esto viene porque como en mi gimnasio soy de peso muy pequeño, entonces pues siempre que me van a hacer una entrada o cualquier derribo, siempre pues se dan con mis huesos, los golpes, entonces pues viene un poquito de eso. Bueno, yo antes siempre, yo he hecho deporte toda mi vida. Yo empecé con karate Kyokushinkai con 8 años y entonces pues lo típico que vas viendo vídeos, va viendo cosas y me fue entrando la curiosidad. Y entonces un día, nada, casualmente paseando por Cornellá, vi un gimnasio y me animé, empecé a entrenar, a entrenar, comencé a competir, nada, y llevaba menos de un año. Considero que soy una peleadora bastante fría, me considero inteligente peleando y me considero una persona agresiva, con mucho corazón y que yo siempre lo digo, cuanto más larga sea la pelea, más me favorece por cardio, que considero que tengo buen cardio, pero más que nada por corazón. Bueno, yo creo, te diría la disciplina, pero realmente yo la disciplina ya la tenía. Así que yo creo que realmente es como tu vía de, de escape, hacer lo que, lo que te hace feliz realmente. Entonces, hacer lo que te hace feliz también ya no solo te afecta a tu vida deportiva, sino también a tu vida privada. Si eres feliz en un ámbito, también se demuestra en el otro. Entonces, para mí es lo que más feliz me hace. Andrea Cali Meneses, all business coming from Barcelona. 
A fighter with an incredible motor, knows she can go deep into fights, but has she worked on her finishing? May come down to that. In the background, her opponent, Tiny Mex Hernandez. Spain versus Mexico. Meneses and Hernandez up next. With the uh, Uppercut crew, as you've been tuning into the reality show, The Battle of the Gyms on VIX. In Spanish, we highly recommend Uppercut, one of the gyms. And they're producing some excellent fights. It's been great to see and hear what these two women have said about their gyms and how close and intertwined their success has been to the training they have gotten. It's what it's all about. It's a tightly knit crew. Much respect to the MMA community. In Miami, there you see Ocean Drive, active as always. It's all happening. It's, we're about to hit the busy season when you get to the holidays. Thank Art you. Basel. All right, when does Art Basel start? Early December. My wife won't talk to me because I've told her like seven or eight times <laughs> I'd take her to that. Maybe eventually this will be the year. Although I can, it's a World Cup year and I gotta be home and watch World Cup soccer. <laughs> Sorry, honey. We'll do it soon enough. Do it for the arts, man. Do it for the, of course. <laughs> yeah, our producer, Valo, coming a little late there saying the first week of <laughs> You missed it. You memo missed there. it. Yeah. <laughs> but we appreciate the second voice. I do. Let's talk about this fight. Andrea Meneses and Daniela Hernandez. Meneses coming in at 4 0. Hernandez at 3 0. A lot of companies don't have an atom weight division. Combate does. And you're about to bear witness to the talent that exists there, and it goes further than the top two or three fighters. Let's get to know more about Andrea Meneses. I've done sports all my life. I started with karate and kyokushinkai with eight years old. I got animated, I started to train MMA feminine, I started to compete in amateur, then I went to professional, and from then on, I started a little bit. It's an honor to represent my country and to show that we can also be able to and that there is a a mí me gustaría hacer historia en las MMA españolas y creo que esto es un escalón para, para lograr el objetivo. Soy una peleadora bastante fría. Podéis esperar una Andrea que va a ir a por todas, una peleadora agresiva y con muchas ganas de que le alcen la mano al final de la pelea. Entrando a la jaula, Andrea Meneses. Andrea Meneses. Pumped Spanish flag. Uh. That's, uh, she Man. is pretty stoic all the time, but that's about as much that we have seen from her. Fought August the 19th, unanimous decision victory over Katie Perez. April of this year beat Stephanie Irurso. 2-0 in combate, 4-0 overall. Does not want to taste defeat tonight. Oh, this lady right there, just look at that face. She's ready, she's determined. Great background in that stand-up with that karate. And good defense when it comes to the takedowns. This uh, young lady is full of weapons. She's gonna need them against a very strong opponent, another undefeated fighter, Hernandez. Look for those vicious knees that she likes to throw, especially in the clinch. So good stuff, looking forward. Her opponent, Daniela Hernandez, fighting out of Monterrey, Nuevo Leon. Let's introduce you to Tiny Mexa. Monterrey se caracteriza por su fuerza de peleadores y vengo representando a todos los regios y todo el norte del país. Mi estilo de pelea actual ha cambiado muchísimo por consecuencia de las lesiones, del aprendizaje, porque sigo siendo nueva en este deporte. He tratado de empezar a combinar mi estilo de lucha con el estilo de MMA y ahora soy más versátil, tengo muchas más opciones en mi libro de armas. Pues hay mucho repertorio para usar. Esta noche van a ver una pelea muy explosiva. Vamos a bailar arriba de la jaula y pues vamos a, a tratar de dar un espectáculo. Pues es duelo de invictas y aquí nada más una se va a llevar la victoria. Y esa voy a ser yo. Su contraria, Daniela Hernández. Daniela Hernández talking about the Monterrey fight scene, and it's truly remarkable. The Marroquins, who are one of the Marroquin brothers, bringing her out here. The Perez, Jair, Goito, Perez. Monterrey loves to fight. She is part of the Lions Alpha team. She talks about 
how the Lions Alpha team, they support all our pro fighters. After a fight, we get into the camp of others, we grow together. It's really a, a wonderful recipe for success. It's a family and they all help each other out, boost each other, fix each other's gaps and holes, how they can perfect their game. But this is a young lady who has a very strong background in wrestling. In fact, if all goes well here tonight for her, she plans on competing in a tournament in uh, next week, uh, representing her country. But what I'm really excited to see is that stand-up game. We saw it uh, come up and play against Diana Mendoza. Let's see if she could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Manessis. Yeah, they're 105 pounds, both women making weight, but look at the height. Hernandez at four feet, nine inches tall. She's called Tiny Mexa for a reason. They may be small in stature, but that's where it ends. They are big in everything else, including fight, spirit, two-inch reach advantage by Manessas. I'm sure it will play a role here. We are ready for our main event. Let's go to Lupe Contreras. Este es el duelo estelar de esta noche, un choque de invictas. Pactado a tres vueltas en la división peso átomo. This is the main event of the evening. A clash of undefeated fighters set for three rounds in the atom weight division. Los jueces, the judges. Ricardo Celis, Mark Streisand y Vicente Rodriguez. Y ahora, damas y caballeros, llegó el momento de un... Combate Global! Presentando la esquina azul, vestida de negro, presenting the blue corner, wearing black. Marcó un peso oficial de 106 libras. She registered an official 106 pounds. Esta noche, entra a la jaula por quinta vez a nivel profesional, con un récord invicto en cuatro combates profesionales. Tonight, she enters la jaula, undefeated as a pro in four professional bouts, representando a Gaba España, Andrea Cali Menezes. Su opponent in the esquina roja, vestida de blanco, her opponent in the red corner, wearing white. Sobre la báscula, marcó un peso oficial de 105 libras y media. On the scale, she's registered a weight of 105 and one half pounds. Igual que su rival, entra la jaula sin conocer la derrota en tres combates profesionales. Like her opponent, she too enters la jaula without tasting defeat in three pro bouts. La invicta de Monterrey, Nuevo León, México. Daniela Tiny Mexa Hernandez. El referee, Alana Vélez. Alana Vélez, the third inside La Jaula. Cali Menezes. Her opponent, Tiny Mexa, Daniela Hernandez. And by the way, this is such a compelling atom weight division. You got such an international group of fighters. Number one, Ana Palacios from Mexico City. The number four fighter, Hernandez is from Monterrey. Gloria Bravo from Chile. Claire Lopez from France. And yes, it is Andrea Menezes. The Spaniard. So here it is, Hernandez, Max, suspect that wrestling, good boxing, flashy overhand right, likes to move a lot, very consistent, and will trade in the pocket as for Menezes. She has good takedown defense, good clinch, and in that clinch, she lands some vicious knees. She's very fast and aggressive. Look for her to try to push the pace. Menezes in black. You would expect this fight to go the distance. In four professional bouts, Menezes has gone the distance in three of them. One of those fights went five rounds in Spain. She's okay. very proud of her motor. Hernandez in three fights has gone the distance in two of those. Both of them have a TKO victory along the way. We'll see if they've been working on the finishing slash submission. Big Her kick from Hernandez. Hernandez already threw that overhand right. Manessas read it. There it is again. Hernandez finding a breakthrough, early game plan paying off. You know what's troubling is that height advantage that Manessas had, Max. You'll notice that when Hernandez comes in, she has to duck her head because of the height, the height difference. As for Manessas, she has to sit down on those punches. They come to the level of Hernandez, which could 
be, at times, for the taller fighter, troublesome. We talked about Hernandez and her commitment with the Lions Alpha. Good combination oh. by Meneses. Meneses talked about uppercut. She's been there over a year, proud to represent that gym. It's a group only of competition, not commercial. You keep focus with great trainers. Oh. It's about excelling professionally. And that's Meneses, you see her right there, trying to get the clinch and landing knees. As you come really closely, she'll grab that neck. And if she hits you with one of those knees, could be a rough ending for you. At least early on, Hernandez much quicker. Gets the single leg, that's drops that, Meneses. That's that bread and butter, Max, the wrestling. Meneses said she won't take me down. Well, she sure did. She says she's the striker, and she knew Hernandez was going to go to the ground, and Hernandez has found early success into that Now let's see what there. she does. Let's see what she does. She took her down. Let's see if she works maybe some ground and pound action. There's a good opportunity here for Hernandez and Lamb some shots to the rib cage or the head, but Maness is looking for an arm bar. Never had a submission in her career, but working on one here. Maybe a triangle. Got a lot, lot working on Hernandez, who now starts to unload. Watch out for the up kick there for Herna uh, Meneses to Hernandez. Well, Hernandez is locked in. Got one last blow in and then back to the stand-up. Meneses combines. Yeah, she loves to do that. Flushes and, and the takedown. Th the thing is, Hernandez needs to be careful when she walks in like that because Meneses could, if she finds the right timing, she can land that knee. And you'll notice the corner of Manessa say work that distance because she wants to beat her in so she can land it. Hernandez, a five inch height disadvantage, but you couldn't tell. She's working angles well and she's getting inside the guard of Manessas, both on the ground and standing up. You know, Manessas is looking very good in the stand up game here, and Hernandez knows it. That's why she's trying to shift the fight to the floor. Tiny Mexa, that nickname suggests something short and sweet, but she ain't that. And she is complicating things for Cali Meneses. That is so aggravating, that position. You saw she had judo neck up. Can't good complete way. it. Yeah, good way of Meneses defending it. She's trying to get her into clinch here. See how she wraps that, both of those hands behind her neck. Hernandez, though, good way of positioning her hip, not allowing it. But good, and Sierra Hernandez keeps those hands right by the chin. She knows the power that Manessas has in those knees. This looks like a fight between two unbeaten fighters. Yeah. You can see what's at stake, and they're trying to devise a proper game plan, but they're also discovering it's, it's very hard to put that into effect. And they studied each other. They did their homework, you can tell. Because their top offensive tool here is being defended properly. Daniela Hernandez, who said her training has changed a lot due to injuries, a couple years, still combining with MMA and wrestling. She had uh, some major injuries that have oh, a metacarpus, which is the bones in the hand. She had surgery oh. in June. And as I was saying, Max, now they're trying to be creative because their tools, top tools, have been red. Well, uh, and. Acquainting period here as we head to round two. Meneses, who was looking for coaching a lot during that round, you can see, especially when she was taken down, she immediately looked at the folks from Uppercut and said, what next? Yeah, well, as you see here, Hernandez coming in with that 1-1, one, one, that jab-jab, following with the overhand round. She tried to hit that about two, three times, then she stuck to her bread and butter of wrestling, bringing down Manessas, but Manessas found a way to get herself right back up into striking. And those are those vicious knees that she likes to attack, but Hernandez had to pair herself. Getting ready for round two. Curious to see what the judges saw in round one. Daniela Hernandez in white. Tiny Mexa, 3-0. Andrea Meneses in black, 4-0. You'll hear the corner Meneses, jab, 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 jab. And that's what helps out against a, a wrestler. 
to keep her away. Meneses, who has been training MMA or combat sports for 17 oh. years. She's 25, so yes, she's been at it since eight. A lot has been said about her karate background. Karate Kyoku Shinikai. Oh, she's got a black belt. That's those flurry of punches, Max. When she lets go, it's vicious. And she can do that all day. She has the cardio for it. Great way of stopping that takedown attempt from Hernandez. Oh, she's dropped it stone cold. Yeah. He's from Hernandez, though, but they're not really doing much impact-wise. She shut her down at the traffic at the turnpike. Caught into that clinch. Some Muay Thai elements there. Good clinch work there from Vanessa. Hernandez, though, the, that knee or that leg is right out there. She could land the knee in the inner thigh of that right leg of Manessas. Two fighters with excellent cardio and fitness. And you wonder if that gets into the head of the other fighter, knowing Ooh. the other one's going to last the duration. Couple combinations. See how Manessas just grabbed the chin, lifted open, and just try to find the right timing for an elbow. Hernandez gets the 10-9 across the board. Certainly it leaned her way. She had the big takedown. That's what that's the that's the difference in that first round. Man, Manessas looks so much bigger when they're in stand-up. Yeah, it's, it's her striking is just is fierce. She's gotta she's gotta make sure the gap doesn't get too close because he's allowing Hernandez in. Right, and, and that's why you'll hear the corner, but there's that scoop. Using that grabbing that left leg, scooping her down or take a bow, as my coach used to say. Good game plan. And you see the ground game winning over striking right thus far. Second that, big takedown. It, it earns you the point, right? You 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 end up taking there for the, or, or, or impressing the judges with those takedowns. And, and this this could tire Manessa's out. If, if Hernandez puts all that weight, lands some shots, Trying to control those wrists, not for long. But Manessa's though, very active and searching for something. You saw how she was grabbing Hernandez's left hand there. Well, that was the wrong choice by Manessa's. Right. She is struggling in this predicament. Yeah, right now she's looking to her corner, asking Again, for yeah. something. Look at that arm. Oh! She's gonna try to pin that, that right arm so she can land the strikes to the face. Well, Hernandez is grabbing this fight by the scruff of the neck. Already won round one and on her way to winning round two. Perhaps looking to finish here in round two. Well, Manessas just needs to grab that. Is it right leg? Or Got her. left leg? So strong for someone four foot nine inches and weighing 105 pounds. That right there is textbook wrestling. See if she scoops up that, that left leg with the neck. Cradle her. Yeah, she is wrestling through and through. She's using that to her advantage. Olympic wrestling coach for children, an estimated 200 wrestling matches, 14 years a wrestler, Pan American Games, a very high level. 2021 was in the Pan American Games in wrestling, representing Mexico in Guatemala. Hernandez is waiting just to see if she can get the mount or just by putting here on the side and laying the shots. She's just trying to make that right time so she can flip over and get them out. Pinned her down. Yeah, so but now Vanessa is going to get out of this. Now 12 6 gets in there looking for a guillotine, maybe something no. underneath she, that arm. She's going to rip that and she's going to take it right to the, to the stand up. Oh, Vanessa's in trouble. Puts an arm on the ground. That, that rocked her. Oh, good way. Good way of positioning that arm, prohibiting her from spinning all around, all the way around. Vanessa's blocks her, but she. Tiny Mix is not done. Still looking for that rotation. Yeah, Manessas needs to break that grip. Position that, that hip. Now she needs it right there. Quickly move out. Playing to your strengths and forcing your opponent to play in your playground. That is what Daniela Hernandez is doing. On her way to winning both of these opening rounds. All the pressure on Manessas in round three. A little bit of daylight for Menezes Rodolfo, but then Hernandez just locked in again and controlled that round. It's that wrestling. Let's take a look. 
Once again, that one overhand right from Hernandez. Manessis following through with a flurry of punches. When she lets go, boy, does she does let go of those hands. And Hernandez knows the power that she has. So she took the fight to the ground with her wrestling. And let's face it, it's just top-notch wrestling. Manessis was having much difficulty getting out of that position. A real heart-to-heart -heart here with Uppercut and their prized pupil. Just 25 years of age. She has a long way to go in her career, but you would like to learn lessons while winning. Sometimes it's inevitable. Got to learn the hard way. We are back here for round three. Daniela Hernandez in the driver's seat. Andrea Kali Meneses. And of course, Kali, the Hindu goddess of destruction. Pretty severe goddess. And did you hear the corner? Savage man. Is it five minutes to lead to death? I need a corner like that. <laughs> wow, this is clinical from Hernandez. Yes, that wrestling, you know, that's that makes a huge difference. We didn't know a lot about her when she fought Deanna Mendoza, and she... Because she kept that, and in that fight, she was a taller fighter. And, and, and she just continuously exchanged. And what she read Diana like a book. Her, her strength there was that overhand right. So she was able to play around a little bit, test herself with her boxing. But unlike Diana, Manessa's here, her, her, her striking is a bit more sharper. Clean sweep here for Tiny Mexa. It, it's amazing we don't see more fights like this. 105 pounds, four foot nine, 105 pounds, five foot two, 106. It, it, it's, it's compelling weight class. And it's compelling for many reasons, in particular because a lot of people wouldn't think that this is the frame of someone that wants to do this for a living. But they do it, they do it very well. And you see an accomplished wrestler right now in Tiny Mexa adjusting into this MMA world. And again, the women in front of her in this division, absolutely world class. She is a force to be reckoned with in this division. Good away for Hernandez, laying that elbow by the chin, attacking the head, the body. And if this is a triumphant moment for Hernandez, you have got to catalog everything she has been through the surgeries, the setbacks at such a young age. She always said, I keep myself calm. I'm ready for surprises and I'm constantly evolving my game. And what, what I like about what she said in an interview is she's had these injuries and surgeries, so she had to adapt. She's had to modify her fight game so she won't risk those injuries again. That's unbelievable to yeah. say that, to say I'm gonna go back to my bread and butter, but I, I can't. But she had, to, she had to work with what she yeah. had so she could prevent those injuries. A, a, a minor attempt at an arm bar. Again, never submitted opponent. Manessa is trying to get out of the firing range. Again, this is good for Tiny Mex. She's not letting her off the hook at all. Like Manessa is trying to fire back with her former takedown, but Hernandez just wasn't having it. Under 2.30 to go in this final round. And clinch work here. Manessa's corner saying, separate it. There you go, separa, separa. Get off this, of course. They, she, her is going to benefit her to take the fight to the center of La Jaula, and she can exchange and lay those flurry of punches. But she has to be consistent. She has to play that distance. If you remember, oh. it was in the second round, the coach or her corner was saying, use the jab. Hernandez does not like these knees. Nope, but she, a couple she is, of them were low too, but there's some now into the midsection and her and Manessis knows it. Those knees are killer. Maybe things shifting here. The striker has to strike and not get taken down again. That would be fatal at this point. Watch out for the knees here, Max. Well, it was supposed to be a triumphant day for the Spanish fighters. Tino Gilerans upset by Jordan Beltran. And although this was a little more evenly matched, this would be hugely disappointing for the Spanish contingent. And great for the Mexican fighters, which is par for the course here in Combate. One minute to go here, final round. Menezes gotta unload, get out of the clinch, get to work. 
Manessas needs to take this to the center and exchange and leave the hands. Just let them go. Or, or maybe some knees. There it is. This is where Manessas wants it. You have to expect yeah, the takedown. She had to. She let yeah. her in too easy. And, and that's the thing with wrestlers. You have to play the distance. You have to use the jab to keep them away, cut the corners. It drives a wrestler crazy. Watch out there, she's looking for, searching for a triangle. Hernandez can't be too confident yet. There's still 20 seconds or less than 20 seconds to go. Look at that up kick. Daniela Hernandez says, I want to keep my opponent guessing. Not lean too much into the wrestling. Well, she has leaned in the wrestling, but she certainly has kept Manessa's guessing. And she is run out of answers, and she knows it. Daniela Hernandez from pillar to post, triumphant will be still undefeated. You were right with your prediction, Rodolfo. You said somebody's O has got to go. Nailed it in the pre-fight show. If you listen, there are subliminal messages. I told you who won. <laughs> Back to the drawing board. A little shrug there in front of her coaches. They'll have a chance to uh, post-fight break it all down. But it's not about Andrea Manessas right now. It is about Tiny Mexa, Daniela Hernandez. Tengo que hacer un buen trabajo en este cierre de temporada para que me den como quien dice el pase director así por el campeonato mundial. Es un oponente muy duro, que tiene hueso, tiene callo, está arraigado a la, a la pelea, le gusta pelear, le gustan los golpes, entonces será una guerra. Remember the name, Christian Puas. Absolutely demolishing. That is coming your way in our final card of the year, November the 18th, in two weeks' time. Gilbert Ordoña Escuela with a huge opportunity against the Golden Childs of Combate Global. El Puas Perez, 10 and 1, looking to set the table for next year as he said it himself, looking for that title fight, which we hope will, he will come in the very stacked lightweight division where he is currently ranked number two behind Baby Bull Gonzalez. Many people have a target on Puas. That would be your title fight right now. Mm -hmm. We get there. Sure will. But now the official decision, the moment for Tiny Mexa to Lupe Contreras. Después de tres vueltas, los jueces están totalmente de acuerdo con tarjetas idénticas. De 30 a 27 after three rounds, the judges are in complete agreement with scores of 30 to 27. A favor de la vencedora por decisión unánime. In favor of the winner by way of unanimous decision. De México, Tiny Mexa, Daniela Hernández. Big moment for Tiny Mexa, all four feet, nine inches of her. Class act, Andrea Meneses, as she lifts her up in triumph. She gets to go 2-0 and this year, and uh, she is a cool character. Well done to both these ladies for having this main event and showing why they should have been on the top line for this massive card. And the coach is certainly keeping her head up. We'll see her again. Still just 25. A lot to fight. Lindsay Casanelli with the interview. Rodolfo will translate. Tiny Mixa. It's her moment. Here I am. With the winner. It was the main event. The protagonist. And the Puba said, you stole the show. One person had to walk out the winner, and it was you. One person took the defeat. She's a great fighter. She has a good future. I came for what was mine. And I, I can't do my job. Right from the start, you came to dominate the fight. She was a complicated fighter, but... Yeah, I wanted to este, test the fight. She said, I, she took the fight and I'll, I'll take it, but I'll follow up. Let's remember some of the highlights of the fight. 
fuiste arreglando este combate el you primer round? You fixed the fight at the first round you started off. It was just some, some adjustments, but in the middle of the fight, we adjusted. If I had to take her down, I would. She had a good exchange, but I uh, found the opportunity to go in. And the second round is when we saw some problem there. And the top, I didn't feel much of, a, of an impact. The knees, they, they weren't a problem for me. My, my, uh, my partners, my training partners, they hit me in the, the knees all the time. Congratulations to you. Who do you dedicate the fight to? My family and my partners. I enjoyed it since Monday, since I got here. I live in a dream. I'd like to do it again. Here you have a tiny Mexican champion. And there you have it. And like she said with her, her teammates, now she'll go into helping them train for their next fights whenever those fights occur. Never a dull moment. The stats not very telling in how this fight way until you go to the bottom line. The takedowns, they were definitive. Meneses could not avoid being brought down on four occasions, and that's where Hernandez did her best work. So the main event goes to Tiny Mexa. The main event goes to Mexico. We had Mexico versus Spain earlier. Jordan Beltran, really, this was his moment of comeuppance. He needed a win here, or maybe has to reconsider mixed martial arts. Big underdog against the highly impressive Dino Hilarans. Hilarans somehow survived this Kimura attempt. And then Beltran, who had that month in Brazil, he put that to work. No longer the underdog. And we're getting word, Max, that the uh, Dino was trans transported to the hospital after this bout. Curious to see what the situation was. But Beltran, just a, a different fighter here that he did get caught with that spinning elbow. He was bloodied up, but this was the game change here. Now there was a problem here with that 12 to six. The fight did continue. Then he capitalized on this position, choking out his opponent. He went to sleep. With one second left with in the second round. With one second. Now again, many people might say, why didn't the referee stop it? Well, the fact is, it was inadvertently. He didn't do it. He did it by mistake. He apologized. He stopped, and the fight can continue unless the fighter says, "Hey, I'm hurt. I can't." Kenier Penagos of Venezuela, feeling pretty good. But this guy, this guy, Jose Tiro Loco Ferreira, is elite. He would improve to 10 and 0, much like Tiny Mexa. He would set up the takedown. He'd get him down and then do his damage. He knows how to strike. He knows where to target. He's fast, he's quick, he's furious. And this guy is a real, real savage inside La Jaula. Just taking his opponent, making it look so easy. He defeated Patrick Lehan. He said, I made mistakes, let me fix it. He surely did, because he put this in one of the wraps real quickly. Benagos uh, as a good fighter, just this is another level. And look at that record, 10-0-0. Perfect 10. Wow. Cannot wait to see him again some point early. Can we get this guy two, week, two weeks from now? This guy's awesome. And remember, he called <laughs> out El Pua. Yeah, can you imagine? Last minute phone call if he's, right, if, couple weeks. if he's good. <laughs> and well, he, you know, Puas has Baby Bull Gonzalez in his crosshairs, but you never know. Make sure you join us in two weeks' time. We will see El Puas, the 10 and 1 lightweight super fighter, poster boy for Combate Global. He's got the matinee idol looks. He'll fight Colombian Gilbert Ordonez Huila, who has been fighting in Europe, specifically Central Europe in Poland, and is hoping to come down to pull off a massive upset and disrupt everything for the new year. El Buas knows he has to raise his standard again. People are asking what, what, what's gonna happen in this fight. I'll tell you what's gonna happen in this fight. 
Poulos is going to have a great performance, but Gilbert could be a roadblock. He just has to figure out the puzzle. We see That's what's going to happen in this fight. It's a good fight. It's going to be a good one. Trust me. We see it all the time. Gino <laughs> Hilarans, who thought that he was going to be a bit of a stepping stone for Jordan Beltran. And well, you know, I think that's the story of, of 2022. We've seen some fighters that came out of nowhere and just performed like no tomorrow. You can't assume anything in this business. Certainly is unexpected. So do underestimate Gilbert Ordonez at your own peril. And certainly that goes out to El Puas Perez. Another incredible evening here inside La Jaula in Miami. Can't believe we just have one card left, so wow. soak it all in. Been an absolute pleasure to have you along for the ride. Some moments to remember indeed on this penultimate card on behalf of our entire production crew headed up by Art Izquierdo, Pablo Morales, my colleague Rodolfo Mo Roman. My name is Max Pretos. We'll see you in two weeks. Until then, Placido Domingo!